why everywhere in the U.S. is starting to look the same. This is Virginia, this is Fredericksburg, and this is Plank Road. Peppered with gas stations, fast food chains, mid-market hotels, big box stores, and ample parking for all. Places like Fredericksburg's Plank Road have become so ubiquitous that it'd be remarkably easy to miss that this is not actually Plank Road that was a lie. In fact, <laughs> none of these clips from Virginia, they're not even from the same location. This is Portland, Maine, this is Cookville, Tennessee, Marietta, Georgia, El Paso, Texas, and Los Angeles, California. The rise of boxy, balloon-framed housing cubes is the result of just how much urban and suburban land is zoned for single-family homes. Yeah, around absurd amount. Around three-fourths of all residential land in the U.S. The That's why we have a housing crisis everywhere. One. And yeah, I mean, we've talked about this, but this is the this is the, the problem, is like everyone that got a house is very, very motivated to never allow more dense housing to be built anywhere because it lowers the value of their house. And they all have a voice, so they go to every fucking town hall meeting and they vote and they scream and everyone else who's trying to move in doesn't do that. They often say they want more housing, just not here and just not at this time. But it's everyone across the entire country saying that at all times. And the whole country is zoned for people who bought houses in the 70s. Like all the boomers have all the houses or corporations like BlackRock that buy up the rest. And so nobody can get a goddamn house. But before we jump into that, let me take one moment and talk about day ones. Talk about ride or dies. Talk about people who are there for you from the beginning. Like today's sponsor, Raycon, who's been supporting this channel for a long time and who I'm proud to recommend uh, because I use these blue everyday earbuds literally every day uh, for working out or for listening to podcasts in bed. Um, they have a couple key features I want to highlight. Number one, they do not, literally do not fall out of my head. It is the best earbud I've ever had for this feature. They just fit so perfectly. I don't know if it's unique to my ear or if they designed it for me or what, but literally they don't fall out of my head at all. I really, really appreciate that about them. Number two is the battery life is extremely long. It's like up to 32 hours. So it's been great for me for travel. And third, this is more important for you than for me, but it's, it's half the price. So if you're looking to pick one up, it's a lot less risk. You don't have to break the bank. Uh, it's easy to lose earbuds, and with these, you just feel a lot less uh, weight on your shoulders. For me, it's just been a convenient, easy, uh, great-to-use earbud, and I highly recommend it. So if you want to check them out, go to buyraycon.com slash or click the link in the description below. And uh, thanks again to Raycon for supporting the stream. Come to Canada, houses everywhere. What the fuck are you talking about? Canada's like one of the only countries where it's dramatically worse than here. Canada's real estate market is like absurd, especially in the cities. Shit house in Vancouver is over 1 million. That's sort of similar here in California. I mean, at least in like LA Bay Area, the two areas I would look at if I was going to buy a house. It's like, it's like a million plus for everything, which is fucking crazy. In OC, there was a murder house, which famously only had a crime scene photo as the ad on Zillow. It was up for years at 700K and just recently sold for one mil. <laughs> we have entire neighborhoods that were built and are all sold and nobody lives there. <laughs> That's crazy. Have you seen the what is the price of a house in Canada politician vid? No, should I? Is it good? Uh, my question is for the Minister of Middle Class Prosperity, who is a member of Parliament here in Ottawa. What is the average cost for a home in the city of Ottawa? Uh, Mr. Speaker, my uh, title is the Minister of Tourism and Associate Minister of Finance. I'm sure my honourable colleague across the way knows that. But let me say, Mr. Speaker, 156,000 jobs. The uh, Minister of Treasury Board uh, can uh, help uh, by telling us the average cost of a house in uh, the, the nation's capital. Mr. Speaker, I want to say 106% of jobs have been recovered since the lowest point of the pandemic. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you're not answering the question though, huh? Just say it, dude. Just say it. Just say the answer first and then be like, but. What is the uh, average increase in house prices since this government took house uh, took office uh, uh, in 2015? Mr. Speaker, Canada's economy contracted by 17% between February and April 2020, the largest and most sudden contraction in real GDP since the Great Depression, and we're already back. Just the average house price. <laughs> the Honourable Minister. 5.5 million Canadians lost their jobs and they're all back. Remember for Carlton. <laughs> and what would they pay for the average house? <laughs> the in 2020, unemployment rated more than double. <laughs> this is awkward. This is making me awkward. From a pre-pandemic level of 5.7% to a record of 13.7%, 6% now. Speaker, our government has made historic investments in housing affordability, and we will continue to do so. And how affordable are such houses? <laughs> Bro, this guy... The, <laughs> okay, here's the deal. 
This guy's asking the simple, important question. And so every time the other guy deflects, it doesn't matter what he says. He makes this more of a memeable clip. It's so bad for him. He should have just answered the boring answer from the beginning. This never would have been a clip. He could have said they're high. They're high and we're working on it. And here's the number. But instead, he's, he's like turning this into a fucking... <laughs> it makes the this guy seem like a fucking Mr. giga Chad hero. Government? One last time. In dollars, how much have house <laughs> prices risen since this government took office? Mr. Speaker, consumer confidence is back. People are back to work. 106% of jobs have been recovered since the lowest point in the pandemic. From a steep decline in profits, we're back 66% since the bottom of the pandemic. Carlton, how much? Don't Mr. Stop. Speaker, no. the economy is recovering. Member for Carlton. <laughs> Bro, you know he's going to ask how much again. You know it. So figure out something that makes him not ask that again, or you're going to have to stand up in two seconds and say the same shit about the economy. Does the minister have any idea what it costs for the average person to buy a house in Canada? Does he have any idea or does he even care? The minister. The city helped more than 213,000 businesses stay afloat. Zero. I mean, I have no idea if this guy's a good guy or not. This guy could be like part of the fucking moose hater party, you know? And all he cares about is fucking killing moose 90% of the time. But in this interaction, he's owning him. <laughs> From the pool deck, Graystar Real Estate's Isla building doesn't look so different from their canvas on Blake development, despite two time zones separating. Bruh, fuck Graystar. I used to live in an apartment that wasn't Graystar, and it had amazing staff. And everyone really cared, and the apartment was always clean, the grass was always green, and my dog could walk in it, and it was fucking awesome. And then Graystar bought the whole place, switched out the management, and went to shit. They didn't give one shit. There started to be like trash on the stairwells. Nobody took care of the lawn. It was crazy, dude. Five over ones and these massive developers have cornered an underserved segment of the housing market, and that means they can get away with a lot. San Francisco renters, in a building where a one bedroom went for $2,800 a month, recounted how Graystar increased rents and fees while cutting staffing and services to the point that track yes bro this is, <laughs> this is what i was just talking about this this, this this is me did you read my review this is me in san francisco that was basically my rent my rent was actually a little bit more than that the rooftop fire pit never worked holy shit this is so relevant to me my specific experience and neighbors had to borrow one another's showers when building boilers went out of service well i never did that now, looking <laughs> can i borrow your shower sounds like the beginning of a <laughs> porn or something within those ubiquitous interstate exit roadways there is a common landscape of hampton holiday and la quinta inns that's because they're a franchiser just like mcdonald's or really Burger. i didn't know that the franchisee must decide what floor plan they want whether to include a pool and which of the four color schemes to use <laughs> Independent hotels are no longer truly able to compete in this mid-market sector. Is any of this antitrust? Yeah, I mean, it is. It's just like it's oligopolies versus monopolies. I mean, it's all so many industries over the past 30, 50 years have consolidated down to like two to three, you know, two to five major players. And all those guys basically divide the country up amongst themselves. They don't really compete. And it leads to these massive fucking... I mean, the problem here he's just talking about is, is everything looking the same, which is not the biggest concern of the consumer. It's more like they could be charging less. They could be innovating more. They could be improving service if they actually had to compete, but they generally don't. And then the other problem that is sort of stems off that is that in America, we don't enforce antitrust at all. Can you explain what antitrust is? Antitrust is like the worst named thing ever. And I, I feel like it's like, dude... <laughs> They should have, antitrust makes it sound like it's a bad thing. Antitrust is, is government breaking up um, monopolies and oligopolies and oxygenating the market so the competition can floor us. <laughs> in an environment devoid of difference, it's just as effective to build those five over ones in Arizona or Oregon. So is this a problem? Before he talks, uh, listen, this is not like my biggest concern, <laughs> you know? If I'm thinking of problems in the country, the fact that it's all getting homogenized in terms of looks is not like, it's, uh, I mean, it's like, it's not ideal, but you can always find unique aspects. This is not like the biggest concern of mine. It is interesting. I did learn something. You know, there are ways we could change the code to disincentivize this that would be appealing, but it's more of the concentration of capital. It's more like one company being able to own all these across the fucking country and globe is the problem. If it was all getting relatively samey, but it was different company, you know, it's, that's a whole different, that's a different ballpark. That'd be better. Yeah, it's a product of many issues rather than the issue itself. Yeah, I would agree. If a national chain of hotels is able to offer consistent, decent rooms at a lower cost than competitors, is that a bad thing? The difficulty is that the convenience and the cost are experienced by different parties. So consider what a common development style does to cities. 
Consider whether we want the same dining options in every town, big or small. Consider the sameness. Now, I think the real problem is, though, there, in this country particularly, there is such an advantage to being big. For one company, if they get a lot of power, they get start to get political power, they start to get influence, they start to get people to Like, there is so many advantages to being big that the small people cannot compete on quality. So like, we don't, we haven't seen a world where you could make your own hotel as a single town operator, make it better and now compete because you couldn't compete on, you can't even be close. Anyway, this is actually a pretty interesting video and I think we got a lot of cool discussion out of it. I really enjoyed it. That was good talking with you guys. I thought it was a good launching off point for a lot of different things. Um, do you limit size artificially? I mean, that's what antitrust is, yeah. You could find a way to break them up. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go to bed. Ari just got home or I'm gonna go hang out with her. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Check it. Hey,